100% chance to make it to the final. That's because this is their fourth game in four days. I talked with their trainer, Silver Harris. She said the key to recovery for Miami is cherry tart juice. She uses it with the track team. It decreases inflammation and will help with recovery. I'll be sending up to your booth at halftime, Beth and Debbie, that's some of that cherry tart juice for you. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> what is this, five days in a row for you, Debbie, Colin Hoops? here in Greensboro and over in Durham. And we are underway on Championship Sunday on the ESPN Networks. Miami, a team on the bubble, not just a couple of days ago. Now they may be fighting for an eight or nine seed in the NCAA tournament. And for NC State, solid on the number one line. The big question is, are they the overall number two seed or is Stanford the overall number two seed? Could be significant in terms of where the teams are headed for the regional round. Can't wait to get into that conversation as the game wears on. Committee has Stanford at number two in their last reveal. The NCAA net has North Carolina State as the number two team behind South Carolina. Kunane, offensive rebound, won't go. Kayla Jones fights for another one. Third chance for State. Make it a fourth time, and a foul. Well, it starts with a double and a dig and a skip and then an offensive rebounding barrage by NC State. Really being aggressive to start the game. Looking to crash three different NC State players with an offensive rebound in that series. Pendande commits the foul. Going to be critical for Miami to at least be competitive on the glass and to force some turnovers today. Not an easy task against the best team in the league at protecting the basketball. <laughs> Terrific free throw shooter for a big girl. How about Elisa Kunane, the only center in America, shooting 50%. 40% from downtown and 90% from the free throw line. She's an incredible weapon and they're four out, one in. She can play the one in or she can play on the perimeter with guard-like skills. Excuse me, 80% from the free throw line. Here is Williams on the drive, gets into the lane. Destiny Harden, offensive rebound up and in. She of the 27 point outburst, a career high in their quarterfinal win when she scored the final 15 points of the game. Miami will push. Marshall right into the belly of Kunane for two. A problem for NC State yesterday was keeping teams in front off the bounce. Virginia Tech did a nice job of attacking inside out, getting to the free throw line. NC State's perimeter defense needs to be better if they're gonna win. They can't keep putting pressure on Elisa Kunane to block shots on the back row. Jones, five on the shot clock. Jakia Brown-Turner on the skip, airs it. Usually a very good three-point shooting team. They have been subpar so far here in Greensboro. Well, look, one team's playing with house money, and the other one's got a little more pressure to start the game. And when you looked at Miami's team, they were loose. Their coaching staff was laughing. They were smiling. They were jumping up and down in warm-ups. I think tempo's going to be interesting. Does Miami just go for it, get it, and run? Because... Their calling card the last three days has been their defense. They've held all three opponents under 60 points. NC State would love to push tempo. Yeah, I think that's the key right there. You've got to get into their legs, especially in the second half. And you have to move the ball, though. The other thing NC State's got to do is move the ball. There's Wes Moore, the ACC Coach of the Year, again this season for the third time. Ended a drought, winning the ACC regular season championship this year for the first time since 1990. And Miami's playing behind, and they're going to rely on help from the perimeter. And you want to turn Kunane into a passer. It's a very good job scheming against Elisa Kunane. Aldi Tabi hands it off to Kelsey, Kelsey Marshall, their leading scorer, who had 18 in the semifinal win over the Fighting Irish yesterday. I talked to Kelsey Marshall before the game. She said, I feel good. I had one ice bath, and she referenced that tart cherry drink that Kelly was talking about. Rita Perez around and out. 
one and done on that trip as NC State has started out 0 for 6 from the floor. Trail, Jaldi Tabdi. Jones has it. There's Kai Crutchfield, one of four different Wolfpack women that can shoot the three. And there's another one, Kayla Jones. Kayla Jones is one of the best hybrid fours in the country. I call her a hybrid because she's not just a stretch who can shoot the three. She's capable of making decisions on the top of the floor. Carla Aryavets, a big job for her running the point today. And a blocking foul will be called underneath the bucket on Brown Turner. She may have been in the restricted yeah, that, area. This play starts outside the restricted, or the lower defensive box, and maybe her feet were in the cylinder. If her heel is over the vertical plane of the line, that counts as being in the restricted area. By Forsberg, Joe Vasily, Billy Smith in the striped shirts for us today. Congratulations to this veteran crew for calling the ACC championship. Marshall, the grad student from Davie, Florida, gets the bucket. This Katie Myers club, they are coming in hot. They've won eight of their last nine. Very similar story to what we're seeing with Kentucky in the SEC right now, Debbie, is the Cats have reached the SEC final coming up next against Carolina. Well, you're going to chance to see Ryan Howard, an All-American and one of the top scorers in the country. Taking on Leah Boston, one of the front runners for National Player of the Year honors. And the best player on that best team right now heading into the postseason. Jones kicks it out, Brown Turner. As that defense collapses inside, a foul on the drive. Anjaldi Tabdi. That's her first. When NC State moves the ball, Beth gets sides, two or three sides. They're much better offensively. You didn't like their movement yesterday, I did not. I, I thought they dribbled, dribbled too much. Yep. You know, dribble too much, stay in one spot, allows the defense to load up. Katie Meyer is one of the best at scheming on the defensive end, so you've got to keep the ball moving so that you can try to crack that code on the defensive end. They haven't seen each other in a while. Their regular season meeting was back in early January. NC State, a winner by 12. You know what, and they were plus 10 on the glass, and they made more threes than NC State did in that game down in Coral Gables. And NC State is the only team to shoot better than 50%. Miami defense this year. Kelsey Marshall has the last seven points here for the Hurricane offense. Jalea Williams trying to use the Bondu screen. Nikita Brown Dorner doing a good job of defending penetration. Shot clock winding down. Marshall's got a jack. Shot clock violation. Nine seven. The seven seed with the early lead. It's still the e fresh refresh. In some ways, refreshing everything. Like the new honey mustard rotisserie style. Now the new tradition of uh, advancing your sticker on the big board to that championship game. NC State looking for the three-peat. Miami looking for their very first ACC crown in their very first trip to the finals. Their fourth game in four days, they've already bounced the two seed, Louisville, the three seed, Notre Dame, and trying to become the first team in the 40 year history of this tournament to knock out all three of the top seeds to win it. Marina Perez and Diamond Johnson, now the two point guards together in the backcourt. And Perez assisted by Johnson. And NC State moves in front. I like it for Westmore. Go a little bit smaller. Try to change the tempo a little bit with your team. Put your two point guards on the floor together. They do play together well. Perez got into some foul trouble yesterday. Johnson played more minutes. Kai 
Gray got to respect her three-point range. The kick out of Bondu for three. That won't go. Nobody but Kayla Jones around the rebound. Underway on a big championship Sunday. ACC, SEC, A-10, Big Ten, Pac-12 all coming your way this afternoon and this evening as Johnson hits the runner. Good mouse in the house opportunity, but because Kayla Jones was posting up so hard, it created a driving lane. Off the takeaway, Perez spinning. Aired it. You can sense the uh, energy level of NC State much better today than yesterday against Virginia Tech. They look a lot more locked in than yesterday's performance. And they won, and I didn't think they played well. But they played well enough to win. And remember, Virginia Tech and Kenny Brooks was down two starters to injury. Well, for the Atlantic Coast Conference, it looks like eight teams will get into the NCAA tournament. Boston College has an argument to be the ninth. And uh, five teams right now in the ACC in the top 20 net. So you've got a shot at three or four teams hosting. Virginia Tech may have earned a top 16 seed with their push into the semifinals this weekend. Well, no league has five in the top 20 net. And no league has two number one seeds potentially. So that should pull the rest of the league up. So you can make a really strong case for Boston College based on some of those metrics that the committee would like to look at. We don't know all the criteria that the committee looks at. We don't even know what's in the net, but this is the net. NC State is number two, and they've been number two for a while. Of course, South Carolina is the overall number one. Louisville fans will be rooting against Baylor this weekend coming up in the Big 12 tournament. That might be the only discussion for that last number one seed, Louisville and Baylor, if Baylor sweeps the regular season and the, uh, the Big 12 tournament. Could be, however, the ACC with its net rankings and the number of teams they have in the net. Yes. An interesting conversation. And then there's the S-curve with the ones and the twos. Right, that brings in a, a lot of conversation about who the ones are, where they go, who the twos are and where they go. We know geography is a part of the equation, unfortunately, because I think our game deserves better. We should be past geography in our game now. Perez, she's hunting her shot a little bit more here in the first half. Well, they're really sagging in on Tumane. So Perez and Diamond Johnson have come in deciding that they're going to look to seek some shots. It's a 7-0 run right now for NC State. And it's been about four minutes since the last bucket, and that will end the drought. Lola Pagande, the junior from Spain. I mean, I love the aggressive post up, showing hands and numbers to the ball, putting Kunane in the net. Perez fouled out top by Gray, her first. This is a great high-low look. You've got to have better pressure on the top of the floor. And Kunane almost picked up a cheap one, but Pendande did a great job doing the work before the ball comes inside. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter of this ACC championship game. Miami showing a little 1-3-1. One, one. Giving the pack a new look, Kunane spins into the lane, help comes to defend. I saw Katie Meyer this morning, and I got to go watch a little film, and guess what she was watching? That 1-3-1 one, one from three years ago, Beth. Three years ago when they ran it against NC State. She is putting in the work, her and her staff, and they've got Kunane to start 0 for 3 from the floor. Just two points so far in the quarter. They haven't run that defense all season. She doesn't remember any possessions of it, which she told me. Gray with the walk. Hey, Champ Week rolls on today. We got four more women's title games for automatic entry into the NCAA tournament. Coming up next, Ryan Howard in Kentucky. Aliyah Boston in South Carolina. Over on the deuce, it's UMass and Dayton for the A-10 championship. And still to come, Caitlin Clark in Iowa in the Big Ten final. Haley Jones and defending national champion Stanford 
in the Pac-12 final as Hobby hits. Debbie, it's a day of heavy favorites and underdogs in all these championship games. And superstar players. Yes. I mean, Aaliyah Boston, South Carolina, Ryan Howard, Kentucky, then Caitlin Clark, all must-see TV. Indiana is a five seed in the Big Ten final. Utah, first Pac-12 championship as a six seed. Miami right here as a seven seed, trying to become the lowest seed ever to win it. I love the energy, the push, the running the floor, staying wide. One shot here for NC State to take it down. Three shot, three second differential there. Oh, Johnson walked with it, and a big takeaway here for Miami, and now they will have the final look of the quarter. That was a tremendous job by Mikea Gray. They look like they're going to ice, and then she jumps to the strong hand of Diamond Johnson to cause that turnover. Katie Meyer, offense, defensive sub. She'll get a couple of shooters on here as Harden and Williams return. I'm calling Destiny Harden's number right here. Has she made a buzzer beater this week? Uh, <laughs> 1.7 <laughs> against Louisville. Yeah, she's made one. Here she is on the inbound. Harden number three in green. Let's see if she gets a look. Revitz are trying to get her a touch, it looks like. Uh, they will have to jack it a foul. We'll get Pendande to the free throw line with under a second to go. Not the way they drew it up, but They'll get a look from 15 it. feet here I mean, a couple of times. She's going to the free throw line on this one. Oh, yeah, she used the ball to create separation, but then she's going to go to the line for two shots. 68%. The 95% uh, house of red didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe 98%. About a, oh, an hour and a half from, uh, from Rob oh, not from campus? Minute, not no. even. Maybe. For the Wolfpack hour. faithful to get here. Depends on who's driving. Depends on how much lead in your foot. Hobby rebounds, so they get one of two, and it's a two-point game through the first quarter to decide the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. There's a moment. The moment we ask, what if? What if we could go further, jump higher, or run the whole thing? What if we could be who we're meant to be and become who we are? She's back on the floor for Miami. One other big takeaway, Katie Meyer said, we are now treating Camille Hobby like she's Kunain. They're gonna respect her three-point shot because she's already knocked one down, guys. Yeah, so apparently an issue with Marshall. She did play seven minutes in that first quarter when as they have done this entire tournament, Debbie, they have really set the tone with a strong defensive first 10 minutes. They held NC State to just 28% shooting. Camille Hobby having an impact on this game early. There's another turnover by Miami on a miscommunication offensively. You know, Camille Hobby, her freshman year, she didn't play much. And she toughed it out. She got better. She would be the first player to practice, the last to leave. And you get rewarded in a moment like this when you stick it out and you keep working. That's what she did. She gets a chance here with Kunain uh, taking advantage of the uh, quarter break to get a little more rest. Jada Boyd, who had a big semifinal, spins and hits. She had 16 against Vatek yesterday. We don't have a flopping rule in our game, and the officials did a good job of ignoring that. Otherwise, that would have been a classic flop. And that's a classic slip. Harden with the lay-in. Destiny's second bucket. She's got four. Great read. Good lift of the weak side to take away the help. Boyd off the cross That's short. not a good shot. You have Hobby on a post up, and you try to create something off the bounce, and Miami gets the transition the other way. There is Marshall back on the floor. Trying to dial up a three. And swooping in to snag. That was Jada Boyd. Another quick shot That's for not NC State. That's not a good shot. 
That's two in a row. All you're doing is allowing Miami to run, rebound and run before your defense gets organized. Pendambe working the boards. You got to move the ball. You should not be taking a contested shot. Here comes that 1-3-1 one, one again. Oh, Perez almost dragged the foot there. Hobby calling for it, doesn't see the defender coming, and Williams grabs it right away from her. Good hustle. Jaleel Williams, the freshman for Katie Myers, has been outstanding all tournament. Hobby doesn't protect the ball. Hey, you got to have, what's the th three things with football, you know? When you can, when you, what Four is it? Points of contact? Yeah, her yeah. dad, I'm sure, taught her that. He coaches football. Got to hold that high, right? Bengals. As guards, we love when a big holds the ball low. Harden. Tries to step by with the left and scoops it up and in, and the Hurricanes have tied it up. What a tough competitor Destiny Harden has been. She has made every big play. She has created momentum. She stopped momentum. And here's one we didn't see coming, Debbie. They own the paint right now. 10 to 2 advantage in the paint for the team without Elisa Kudain and Camille Hobby. Miami is like, hey, we are here. We're not going anywhere easy, right? This is a tough piece of footwork right here by Harden to stretch. That's what you call excellent pivot work they in the are, post. They are working off the bounce and getting it inside. Brown Turner, stripped loose, Kunane fouled. Look at Destiny Harden grads, Pendande, who has obviously, that's how invested this Miami team is. I mean, they've been emotionally locked in. Well, they, they came here it, as a seven seed. Nobody believed. I mean, yeah, they were they were supposed to beat Duke. They, they were supposed to beat Louisville. They all called the travel on that one, and they they didn't get agreement from the officials on it. And Pendande has picked up her second personal foul. Shaldi Topdi returns. Yeah, the two big upsets, and now a shot at the regular season champs for Miami. He named to the line. Now three for three today. Coming up tonight on ESPN and the app, it's an NBA Sunday Double Dipper. The Raptors and the Cavs, they're right next to uh, each other in the East Conference standings, uh, followed by the Knicks and the Clippers. Coverage starts with NBA Countdown, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Foul off the ball. Jones trying to displace Mbandu. That'll be the first on Caleb. I mean, when you look at Miami as a seven seed and you think about their length, their veteran guard play, it's not good the league's been all year, right? Maybe a little bit overshadowed by two number ones, but certainly Miami, with the way they've played in February into March, been outstanding. They're going to be a tough knockout in the NCAA tournament. Terrific box out for the pack. And it's all about matchups. Whether you're an eight or a nine, it doesn't matter. New this year, there will be a first four for the women. The field expanding to 68 teams. And the selection sun, uh, show moves back to Sunday this year. So it's a week from tonight when we will see the field of 68. Foul called on Bandu. We're then pointing to the top to get the pass from the top of the floor because she had great position. Good communication. I love it when a post player says, pass it up there, I've got the seal. Her first basket of the day. Kune now with six points, three rebounds. Watch the point. Look, pass it up there. Better angle. I'll keep the seal and the contact. Good work, footwork inside to finish. Projected to be a top ten 
pick for the WNBA draft this spring. And a big chance to move up high on that list with a top-notch postseason. Williams for three, gets it for Miami. <laughs> Jelena Williams is not a three-point shooter. She actually has only made four in her entire season. <laughs> And she's made two here to the tournament. All about timing. Makes it a one-point game as we approach the midway point of this second quarter. Johnson. Jones will have to heave. Good defense for the Canes. Oh, Crutchfield got a piece of that. Johnson with the steal and the dish. And Brown Turner missed the layup. Chance for Miami to get a big swing and the lead. Kunane with the block. How about Miami's play keeping this crowd out of it? Good defensive play by Kayla Jones. Jones. Yeah. Jones got the swat. And we've got a timeout. 4.42 to go. A tight one in the ACC final. From Maybelline, New York, new tattoo studio brow lipstick. A lifted, tinted brow look. All that conversation. Thank you so much, Monica. We have seen chaos already since the committee's final reveal on Monday night. Look at this. The teams highlighted eight of the top 16 have lost games this week. So there will still be a whole lot of movement. Big one we're watching here today, of course, is where does NC State land if they win this game? Are they the overall three? Do they pass Stanford, depending on what the Cardinal do later today? Where does Louisville end up after they lost in the quarters here? Well, NC State and Stanford have common opponents. They both beat Indiana and Maryland, and they both lost to Dawn Staley's South yep. Carolina team. But South Stanford has a worse loss in South Florida than NC State's two losses to Georgia and to South Carolina and Notre Dame. So three losses for the Wolfpack, but I mentioned South Carolina at the top. So I think the strength of the ACC, if NC State can hold on here and win, with a deeper league with five teams in the net, top 20, NC State should be ahead of Stanford and be the overall number two number one. Pac-12 has three teams in the top 20 net. Of course, Stanford was a runaway winner this year. They look so good going undefeated through the Pac-12. And then that's where geography comes in. It certainly looks like South Carolina will actually be coming here if they win their first and second round games to the Greensboro Regional as the overall number one seed. And they should. That's not the, the issue. The issue is Wichita and Bridgeport, because Stanford will be in Spokane. We like to call it the Yukon Undrum because they have been so good for so long and have earned the right to play close to home year in and year out. They've been to the Final Four 13 years in a row. And this year, of course, they had the big injury to Paige Beckers that affected their record. So what does the committee think of the eye test because Connecticut right. looks awfully good since she's returned? With a true S curve, do they stay in Bridgeport as maybe the overall five or six? Or will they have to go on the road for a first time in a long time? If they, in earn, the if they earn it, it's great. Yep. But if you skew, skew the rest of the top eight because of that, that is unfair. And that's where I think our game has gone past that. True S curve. Yes. yes. Geography, yep. Of course, Miami can mess with all of that if the Canes can continue their yep. run. They've won three games in three days, and they're working on a fourth. Here's another thing, too. I mean, I looked at Bridgeport. There's not many tickets left. They have bought the tickets up there. And so now you decide. You, if you put UConn there, they've got fans there. It's going to be great. If you don't put UConn there, who, what, how are the other teams going to get tickets? And Bandu with the steal. Marshall North came in with the rebound. It would certainly look like Stanford, uh, it's a given, they would be in the Spokane Regional. And then what are you going to do with Baylor? Perhaps Iowa? Would they be the top two seeds in Wichita? That place would be rocking. Kunane. And one. This
This is terrific execution by NC State. Pick and roll on the strong side. Clear out the weak side help. Late arriving. Cunane with a tough and one opportunity. She has scored the last eight points for NC State and a chance to tag on another. Last year, the ACC's tournament MVP, when she averaged 23 points, nine rebounds, shot better than 60%. She's on that pace again. And Debbie, she's sixth all time in scoring. And some of the legends of the game that have suited up over the years for Kay Al coach teams that are on that list. Gina Beasley at number one. Linda Page, Andrea Stinson. Chastity Melvin from State's Final Four team in 98. She has put her name up there on a very special list in Raleigh. After all these years, Gina Beasley is still the all-time leading scorer and rebounder in NC State history. She belongs in the Hall of Fame. Perez around it now. Here's Marshall. The name knocked it loose. Miami will reset. Going to be an offensive foul on a moving screen. Is that on Bandu? Yes. It is, number two. Hey, this is a fight right here. Like, Miami is not letting anybody push them around. I mean, they are solid defensively. They are forcing NC State, for the most part, to take jump shots. It's a two possession game at their tempo. play here in the first half. And you back to the 1-3-1. One, one. Perez going to get an open look. She'll put it on the deck. Kunain offensive rebound. Jones. Brown Turner crashes. Shot gets blocked, all kinds of contact on both sides. Ball still loose, and finally, Kayla Jones lays it up and in. Wow. All right, now. Not good for Miami if it's that physical without their depth. Good for NC State. Crutchfield almost got it. Five on the shot clock. Marshall drops it off. Kudain bothers. And it's a shot clock violation. Well, you can credit the sixth man for this one. What a great job the Wolfpack fans did in helping create that kind of environment in here where Miami couldn't communicate. So last shot here of the half for NC State. Her last possession. They've held Miami scoreless for the last four minutes. Now trying to put a capper on it. Kunane back to Perez. Got to go to Kunane with this matchup on the floor. Perez will try for three and hit it. NC State ends the half on a 10-0 run. And a nine-point lead at the half. Let's get it over to Kelly. Particularly well. The only difference was those last four minutes when NC State went on a 10-0 run. Big here now for Miami to stay close, playing their fourth game in four days and put some pressure on NC State in that fourth quarter. Well, you want to put game pressure on the top seed, that's for sure. And we'll see how much we'll see that 1-3-1 one, one defense that Coach Meyer threw out in the first half. I actually thought she might have saved that for the second half. NC State, I'm sure, talked about it and made some adjustments at halftime. Perez, the feed to Kunane. They get Elisa a quick touch, and she scores. With the left. Nice half hook, something she spent a lot of time in the offseason working on, being able to finish with her left and her right. 
He's got 13 to lead all scorers. And the block inside. That's the second for Kayla Jones today. Marshall off the bounce. She and Harden were their go-tos in that first half. And Kelsey with her first bucket of this third quarter. She's got 11. I mean, I don't see fatigue in Miami at any point playing their fourth game in four days. But where you'll start to see it show up is, do they get in a stance? Do they sprint through their actions and their detail? Do they sprint the screen? Do they sprint the floor? Those things are where you start to see fatigue. Pendande. Good job to keep it away from the scrappy Perez, and she knocks it down. She's got seven. Miami coming with some full court pressure, looking to trap. And Lorena Perez is being face guarded right now by Williams. Jones fouled by Marshall. Let's check in with Kelly. Hey guys, two main points of emphasis from the NC State staff coming out of halftime. First of all, keep attacking that zone, swing the ball, test the gaps, and kick it if it isn't there, and be sure to knock down those threes with confidence. The second thing, Westmore is very focused on these first five minutes. They want to be able to maintain that momentum that they built going into the half and keep this crowd very much into this game, guys. That critical juncture right here to we'll try and push through. You know, NC State knows what it feels like. Here comes some, some change by Wes Moore. He's looking to extend his pressure. Typically, they don't look to extend their pressure very often, even after made free throws. I think it's all a part of the rhythm of the game to me. You know, the NC State's a very offensive-minded team, and they have to be an offensive rhythm. And sometimes your defense can get you there. The shot, Pendande, that ball did not touch the rim, and they will not get up another shot. And a violation on the Canes. And you see the universal sign for be cool, everybody. Stay calm from Katie Meyer to her team right now. Down double digits. Brown Turner. I mean, no. how many layups has NC State missed in this championship oh, game? A lot. I thought she was fouled, yes. Good call. That was a foul. See, the problem for Wes Moore's team has been off the bounce defensively and sometimes dribbling too much offensively. When you miss a shot at the rim, the other team can sprint. You already got numbers if you push. Area that's a 77% free throw shooter. It's the first day. Hey, next Sunday night, we're just a week away from Selection Sunday. But the NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by Capital One gets underway at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Bonus hour of coverage at 9 o'clock over on ESPN2. We will see the full bracket of 68 teams this year as we add the first four to the women's game. And an and one for Kune on the drive and finish. See that skill transfers to the next level. It's full court pressure. You got three on two. You got the six five in the middle. Good take. That was like a half a euro step right there, Beth. That's six five with a little euro. Mm -hmm. NC State now has matched its biggest lead of the day. Kunain with 16. Had the double-double yesterday with 20 points and 13 rebounds. And we were talking, I thought she was going to need to have 25 today for NC State to put this one away. Let's see if they go back to her and keep trying to get her established on the baseline. Good hustle by Jakia Brown-Turner. Again, playing in transition. That's the way you stop the basketball in transition, what Destiny Harden did right there. Again, Kunain pointing. And she hit the deck hard, and Kunain stays down after the play.
Interesting, too, they immediately blew the whistle with a live ball, Debbie. Miami had a five on four going the other way. Is it the ankle? Foot landed on the defender right there, the left ankle. And Kunain will come out with 6.40 to go. Hobby checks in to take her place and a timeout Miami. And Katie Meyer immediately coming over to the official saying, hey, we had a five on four right there with a quick whistle. Back in a moment. I insist. It's your turn. Game. Then it's Caitlin Clark and Iowa against Indiana for the Big Ten title and the defending national champs with the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Hallie Jones, taking on upstart Utah in our finale coming up later tonight. The star of this one with an ankle injury, Debbie, and that was just a moment ago. Elisa Kunain, who just left the game, went back to the North Carolina State locker room to get checked on out at the 640 mark with an 11 point lead. As soon as we can get a report on Kunain, we will let you know, but Camille Hobby has played well. Hobby Six. is two, two for two from the floor, Beth. She's got four points in five minutes from the first half. 6-10 to go here in the third, and there is a touch for Hobby inside. Missed another layup for NC State, and it will go to the Canes. I mean, why aren't players using their left hand on the left side of the basket when you have the defender right there? She used a dribble to power up. Where's the fundamentals, Beth? The yeah. Fundamentals. Left side, left hand. What's at stake for Miami? They are trying to become the lowest seed to ever win this ACC tournament. No one has ever beaten the one, two, and three seeds to take home the trophy. They've taken down two and three, working on number one this afternoon. Really good defense by Jakia Browntoner. Moving her feet, high hands. I thought NC State had a really good defensive possession there. They defended the flare screen early. Defended penetration. The kick out to Hobby. Air mailed it. And out of bounds to the Canes. Good play by Marshall to knock it off the defender. So Miami has a real opportunity here without Elisa Kunain and Job Detaldi on the inside, who also has some pick and pop opportunities. Or certainly has that in her skill set for Katie Meyer. Should mention congratulations to the Lutzenkirchen family. Abby, Katie's niece, got married yesterday. I'm sure the Lutzenkirchens and all the Myers are all watching today intently, getting ready to celebrate another opportunity. Should they celebrate the wedding yesterday and maybe a championship today? Marshall off the miss. Under five minutes to go and a scrap inside. Hobby will be called for the foul. That will be her first. 40 to 29, NC State on top. There's a moment when we find our stride. South Carolina, Stanford, NC State, and Louisville are on that top line as the one seeds. NC State showing some zone off the timeout. Taken away by the pack, they continue to play without Elisa Kunain, an apparent ankle injury. She left to go back to the locker room, has not returned to the bench at the 640 mark of this third quarter is when it happened. Since then, however, Miami has been not has not been able to chip away at the lead. Hobby tries to wrap it, missed another layup. And then draws the foul. Oh, that's just great work by Hobby to draw that foul because she just had the ball over her head and just tried to draw the foul by throwing it at the hoop. I also think because of the versatility of Wes Moore's offense, you can put Jada Boyd into the block. 
and have Hobby play in the high post area also. Boyd uses her quickness inside. Well, Monday night on ACC Network, the final two episodes of the tournament, a history of ACC men's basketball. Episode 9 at 9 o'clock, followed by episode 10. You can always play catch up on your ESPN app. Miami 0 for 3 with two turnovers in their five possessions since Cunane departed. And they have not scored a single point. Gray quick to pull the trigger on the three without a pass. A different way to get into that action for Katie Meyer. She's dumping out the playbook on NC State. Hobby. Rebound, Jal de Tabdi. Here comes Marshall. They have not had uh, chances to run here in this second half. Gray steps around Crutchfield and then missed it. Canes will keep. Katie Meyer having to go a little bit deeper into her bench. Jasmine Roberts, the freshman, getting some minutes. Marshall, short. Kept alive by Crutchfield. Four games in four days for Miami. The two sides have combined for two points in the last four and a half minutes. On the run, the pass picked off by Boyd and a foul. <laughs> NC State just one for their last eight from the floor, Beth. And Miami 0 for their last eight, Debbie. I like Jada Boyd right here. I think I'd run something for her. Miami going back to the 1-3-1. Boyd number five in white. Perez will pull up and hit. Get in the gap and shoot it with confidence. That's exactly what Westmore told Kelly going to the, coming back to the half. Bob inside, Perez comes to help out underneath. Good read. You got a ball fake that. Area Vets to inbound. Final two minutes of this third quarter. Area Vets still cannot find the bottom of the net. Taken away by NC State. Step up screen by Hobby. Wide open inside. Beautifully executed. In transition. Quick hitter for the Wolfpack. A 9-0 NC State run. I see trees of gray. Camille Hobby's going to do a great job in transition, setting this step-up screen, and then Perez is going to read it well. This is a very good play by NC State in transition. No weak side help because a quick hitter, you're not organized on the weak side, and NC State does such a good job of running to the three-point line in transition on the weak side. NC State has scored six straight since Kunane left the game. Miami has not scored in the last six minutes and have missed their last nine shots. And perhaps the fourth game in four days is catching up. They did have the huge fourth quarter comeback to shock Louisville a couple of days ago. And Bondu blocked and a foul.
And Bondu going aggressive to the glass. Mm. And look at the crowd on their feet. Kunane returning to the bench. She will actually make a stop at the trainer's table behind the bench. Let's send it over to Kelly, who's standing right next to her. Elisa Kinane has entered the building. As you heard, the loud cheer from NC State Faithful. She is now wearing an ankle brace on her left ankle. Just had the ankles taped for the game, so she's added that brace. She's getting on the bike to try to get back into game shape to get back in and gave a thumbs up to the crowd, guys. So we'll see what happens with Elisa Kinane. Of course, the score could have a big factor in that if she needs to return or not. Absolutely, it's not worth it, right? If, if you don't need to put her back in, then you'd have 10 or so days to rest up and rehab it, get ready for the NCAA tournament where NC State will be hosting first and second round action on Kayao Court at Reynolds Coliseum. Remember last year, Kayla Jones got hurt in the NCAA tournament in the first round, and it really affected NC State's ability to advance. I'm sure that went through the minds of several Wolfpack fans. Perez double digits now with 10. Perez has been known to hit a few big shots in this building. Commits the foul there on Marshall. She had the big bucket late in last year's ACC championship game. A minute to go here in the third. Marshall gets into the lane and gets it up and in. Kelsey Marshall is going to be on the all tournament team. She has played so well here in leading Miami. Final seconds of the quarter. Johnson, step back, three. away from a three-peat here in Greensboro. Singing and driving. Playing the drum. The Buster Raleigh twice in the last two years. They would join uh, Duke, who has five straight. North Carolina and Notre Dame each had four straight championships and now NC State trying to get a third in a row back to the zone Diamond Johnson oh she hit the three to end the third hits another to start the fourth and they have not skipped a beat since Kunane went out with the ankle injury second half looks like a number one seed Marshall spotted so. by Boyd I think so Got a lot of great games on the schedule tonight, all day. Great women's championship caliber play. Stars, great teams. And Kunane has uh, looked uh, every bit the All-American today for NC State. We got Leah Boston on deck with South Carolina, followed by Caitlin Clark at Iowa. What are, what are their four major? Player of the Year awards, right? Yeah. Well, Wade Naismith, Wooden, AP, AP, U.S. Basketball writers. There's a bunch of them. I think the consensus is they're, they're, they'll probably each win a couple. Well, the Clark and, and Boston. Yeah. Maybe and Melissa Smith in there. I think uh, Aaliyah Boston is probably the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah. As well as the candidate for Player of the Year. Smith was the Wade Trophy winner last year. Boston is that big presence inside, dominant at both ends of the floor. Everything runs through her. And Clark is just that electrifying perimeter player. Got the ball in her hands, making all the decisions with Steph Curry type range on her three ball. And no one's led the nation in scoring and yeah. assists in the women's game. And it's only happened once on the men's side. That was Trey Young. 
playing now for the Atlanta Hawks. This looks like a, a big day for the dominant one seed. There are uh, dominance versus dogs. The underdogs coming up the rest of the day. Shout out to the Kentucky Wildcats, the Indiana Hoosiers, the Utah Utes. A couple of those teams were on life support, really. Not even sure they'd be in the postseason. Now they are tearing it up and playing for their conference championships later today. Julia Williams, good-looking freshman for Katie Meyer. That beautiful pull-up jump shot to the elbow. Miami on the bubble 72 hours ago. Now looking like maybe a 7-8-9 seed, according to Charlie Cream. I, I think Katie Meyer and her staff and her team were winners regardless of the outcome of this one, just because yep. of the way they played since they've been here in the upsets over Louisville and Notre Dame. Hobby called for the walk. And, you know, for Katie Meyer, Beth, she's been in the league longer than anyone else, 17 years as the head coach there, all-time winningest coach in the history of Miami. And as a player at Duke or in this situation as a head coach, never had a chance to play in the player coach in the championship game. And you could see it all over her at the beginning of the game, how excited she and her staff were. We talked about all the teams in that Selection Committee reveal that have already lost this week eight of the top 16. So there could be uh, quite a bit of movement up and down the seed lines heading into Selection Sunday as Miami draws the foul inside. Second on Camille Hobby. And how about this? Cunane's going to come back in. West want to make sure he's getting that one seed. <laughs> Injuries are a factor, a part of the criteria. Yeah. It's great to see her back. Good work by the training staff. We did not get a chance to see Elizabeth Kitley or Kayla King yesterday, both out with injuries for Virginia Tech, but uh, hope all is well. What was that left foot, right foot breathe she had written on her sneaker there. Hope all is well with them, and they'll be good to go for the NCAA tournament. Virginia Tech's got a chance to host. They're in the host bubble. Left foot, right foot, breathe. Mm -hmm. That's Pat Summit. That's also one foot in front of the other. The old Christmas, uh, the old Christmas movie. Good in, double comes. She pitches it back out. Jones swings it to Jackson in the corner. Miami will push. Need buckets and need a bunch of them in a hurry. Oh, that was a tough. Destiny Harden playing some tough defense there. Destiny, six points today, had that huge five minutes at the close of the Louisville game. And of course, that immediately moves her up the scouting report for opponents. The points have been a little harder to come by since. She misses there on the three. Good aim. Oh, Harden got a piece of that. Marshall for three. Got it. What fight in Miami. Well, they've erased a seven-point deficit already once in this tournament. Wes Moore getting on the officials. Look at Destiny Harden. That's all ball. And then Marshall runs the lane wide for a th triple. They scored the last six points. Perez pulls up. Way off. Signs of life for Miami. They have held state scoreless for the last 
four minutes. Timeout, Katie Meyer. We'll take the timeout with them. 4.45 to go in the ACC final. There's a moment. Of the year and one of the favorites in the National Player of the Year conversation, Kentucky versus South Carolina. Coming up, stick around. Champion will be crowned. Thank you, Monica. Looking forward to that one coming up next from the SEC championship game. Let's check in with Kelly right now. Coach Meyer's main message in this Miami huddle, guys, was, look, we have more points in the paint than we do. We can score in the lane, and that was their point of emphasis. She was relaxed. She looked at them, and she said, we've done this before. Ended the huddle with a smile, guys. And let's see if it's Destiny Harden time again. Jakia Brown-Turner on that assignment defensively. Off the bounce, Marshall. Got it. Full core pressure. This is what you want if you're Miami. Put some game pressure on NC State. Miami's Kelsey Marshall doing a nice job down the lane line. Off that screen and roll in the middle third. Miami on an 8-0 run. Out to Johnson. Diamond off the bounce. And a foul. Slice, stagger, attack the strong side. Good action on the weak side to keep the defense busy. It allows that lane line to open up. State 11 of 12 at the line so far today. Champ Week rolls on with more women's championship action for you. SEC's on deck with Kentucky and top-seeded South Carolina. Over on the deuce, it's UMass and the top seed Dayton for the A-10 final. Still to come, come uh, Caitlin Clark and Iowa taking on Indiana in the Big Ten championship. And defending national champion Stanford against the upstart Utes, looking for a Pac-12 crown. Six Eastern on ESPN2. All that action also available on your app. Championship Sunday here on the ESPN Networks. A week away from the selection show next Sunday night. Johnson looking for Kunane. That's a really bad angle. I mean, Kunane wasn't shaped up to the ball. Maybe one more dribble. The dribble handoff, Diamond's trying to get it inside on that little cross screen. Door open for Miami. A little game slippage by the Wolfpack here late. Got to tighten up the details at this point in the game. Williams three, knew it was off as soon as she shot it and then commits the foul. Miami with just two team fouls. Only one timeout remaining for Miami, four for NC State. Perez, they got a three on two. Johnson fouled. Numbers for NC State. See, that's rim body ball right there. Diamond Johnson doing a great job of keeping her body between the rim and the Defender from the defender and the ball. Johnson hits on the first. That'll get her into double figures. Ten points for Diamond. Reina Perez with ten. Kunane with sixteen. Kayla Jones with ten rebounds. Kelsey Marshall leading the way for Miami with eighteen. She's the only one in double figures. Johnson staying in front of her and she gets it up over the top. Good defense, better offense. The 
to stay off the sidelines now. You want to try to keep the ball in the middle third if you're NC State. You don't know when Miami might bring the trap. Ganin gets a touch and a trip to the free throw line. If it's on Pendande, that's her fifth. And it is. Well, the luxury of your 6-5 in a late game situation is she's an excellent free throw shooter. So when it's a late game and you teams are pressing, you can use her as a press reliever because she's going to step to the line and be confident. And that would probably be everybody <laughs> blaming me for that. Gets the second. She's not 100% on that ankle, but she will be by the time the NCAA tournament rolls around since she appeared back in the game. Miami loves this pistol action, and they're so good at scoring off it in transition. Marshall to the line. It's the first on Kinane. Westmore gets Raina Perez, Diamond Johnson, and Kai Crutchfield keeps them on the floor to handle against what is anticipated pressure by Miami. Marshall now with 21 points. Gotta be prepared to box out here. Gets them both, and here comes the full court. Handled by NC State, and Perez gets it out of the corner. Johnson quick to pull the three. Yeah. Not a wise decision, because it's a long rebound to an easy two. 11-point game. There's the ball handling aspect of the three guards, and there's also the decision-making aspect for the three guards. Well, the Crutchfield, guards. they'll try again for three, no good. And here comes Miami again. Pull up, won't go. Oh, big miss there for the Canes. And now the breakout for Perez. And she'll make them pay. Well, to your point, Beth, all the guards, positive ratio. Decision making not necessarily always in the statute. Uriavets, now they're fighting the clock. Air ball rebounded by Diamond Johnson. And the Wolfpack fans are ready to make some noise now. Perez, three. Williams with one minute to go. This is the layup. What a wild finish. On their feet in Greensboro. The reminder fans following the game, ACC Network Extra on the ESPN app. Nothing but net coverage for you with Kelsey Muffet, Chelsea, and Kelly. As the Wolfpack women close in on a three-peat at the ACC Tournament. Let's get it to 
Kelly. Down here with ACC champion Wes.